Well, hello everybody. Angel and I, if you can see Angel and Otter, she's in that shot, are out checking on the damage to the hoop house. Uh, not to be surprised about it at all, I guess. The plastic on the hoop house was guaranteed or rated for three years. And this August, if it had made it to this August, it would have been six years. So it's been on here for about five and a half years. We had a lot of heavy snow earlier in February and I haven't been able to get out here since. The uh, weight of the snow made it fail. It almost looks like it was cut with a knife. I know it wasn't. I mean, it was just where it was along this this ridge here anyway it it has failed and it's got to be replaced and I'm ordering the piece today to replace it with it isn't that big of a job I don't think I have to replace either end just the the roof over the over the middle here so time will tell but I don't think it's going to be that that hard I'll do it early in the spring once all the snow out here has melted I also while I'm here showing this I want to apologize for people who keep looking for more cabin videos uh, I've been having some problem with my right knee now for a couple of years and this winter it has really got, well, quite bad. I, I walk around, that's not a problem, but it, it just doesn't bend and I limp quite a bit. And in the deep sno soft snow I can't get through it at all because once my right leg sinks into the snow I can't get it up high enough to make another step, a long story short. Anyway, I am scheduled to have surgery in a few weeks time not major surgery. I've had this kind of surgery before. It's that scope, arthroscopic surgery on the kneecap. And hopefully the surgeon will find something in there that can be repaired again and I'll be off and running. Well, not running, but I'll be off and walking better. So that's why I haven't been out to the cabin. As soon as there's bare ground out here and I can get out, I'll come out and make another another cabin video. It's been very cold these past three days so there's a good crust on the snow and I was able to get out today. Well that concludes this little part of the video. I'll take you in and show you more of what's going on in the uh, in the grow room and whatever to close it off. But I'm just about to go in and order some plastic. That's the great thing about a hoop house. I mean the, the expensive part is these steel ribs. Uh, the plastic, well I haven't actually ordered it yet but I would think it would be less than a hundred dollars maybe a little over a hundred dollars to replace the the plastic on this it's 16 feet wide 20 feet long and as I said I'm quite sure I don't need to replace the ends there's no reason why they would fail they're never under any kind of pressure or anything so just a day's work or half a day's work sometime later in the spring it'll be back in operation but earlier I guess I had also mentioned that I wanted to plant some of those Tom Thumb peas in that uh, cold frame that you see in there because then it would have been sort of under double glazing with the roof here so that's a plan that's going on hold until next winter hopefully well this is for South Paw Davy I think a lot of you have subscribed recently, or some of you have probably already subscribed to his channel since we're doing this thing with the host tomato. But Davey is now doing um, some experiments with homegrown mushrooms, and I'm quite anxious to see how his work out. But I just thought I would show you these, Dave. This is a pile of logs that I inoculated. I don't, not really not sure. I have to go back and check videos. It's at least three springs ago and maybe four years ago, and I've had nothing um, come out of them. They're inoculated with a type of uh, shiitake mushroom, I think. Uh, little plugs that you, you drilled holes and tapped in the plugs and then covered the hole with, with wax to prevent anything else from getting in there. So, hope springs eternal. I'm still watching this pile of firewood. Well, while I'm out here, I thought I'd have a look at my hazel trees. I've got three trees, one which is still pretty much a runt, but it did put on quite a bit of growth last year, and it doesn't have any catkins. And then the two others, this is uh, the oldest one that we're looking at here. The other two are a different variety. I bought them for cross-pollination. And I, once again, I can, <laughs> if you're watching Woody, I can never remember what it's called that I did last year. But you just take some of the branches and bend the ends over. I did it in August. And it caused them to make hundreds of catkins. I'm just checking them because I'm very pleased to see that they are lengthening out and they're quite supple. 
Sometimes in a severe winter here, uh, they don't survive the winter. They just stay, well, about half the size. These are already starting to, to grow, to lengthen out. I don't see any female flowers yet. They're, they're a tiny, tiny, tiny little thing, but I know where to look and I'm not seeing any. And the other tree, I won't bother to show you, it's got just as many catkins and they're smaller. It's a different, as I say, it's a different variety, but fingers crossed, there should be good cross-pollination this year. Maybe I'll even get a handful of hazelnuts. Sunlight is so bright on the snow, I can't tell for sure. Hopefully that's in focus. You can see that sharp little cut at the end of that branch, almost looks like it was done with pruning shears. That's rabbit damage. Uh, I don't have very much of it, thankfully. That branch is down low enough that they could have reached up and got it at any time, but when the snow was much deeper, I see several branches here, oh, a good meter off the ground, where the, the ends have been clipped on them, but they can do a lot more damage than that. They didn't care for hazel trees, I guess. Well, before we go on to look at what's happening with the indoor plants growing here, I wanted to show you something about a, an app that Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland, just did a video on. It's called My Seasons, and what it is referring to is phenology, a brand new name for me. But it's, uh, well, the description of it here is, you view global analysis of vegetation, phenology, based on Earth observation data and collect your own data describing the development of vegetation to support science about climate change. The data is taken from NASA um, satellites and this particular screen that I'm showing you is the growing season over the last, well it shows 15 years but the last year that it's collected data for is 2014. That's the growing season for my area, and it's remarkably accurate. Um, I don't remember specifically each year when it started and when it stopped, but it's just exactly when I usually plant my garden outdoors, like the last week of May, and occasionally there it shows the first week. But anyway, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, video that Rob put up, and I'm going to put at the end of this video uh, a link through one of those end screen things. A picture of his video will come up and if you click on it you can go there and he gives a much better definition of it. But I'm having a lot of fun playing with the app and I thought you might enjoy it too. I thought we'd take a little look around at what's growing in front of my garden door. Patio door, garden door. They call it a garden door because it opens like an ordinary door inward. I guess a patio door is one that slides. Anyway, it's the glass door of what I'm talking about here. The peas were taking up the space that I needed under the lights in the grow room, so I've moved them down here. And I've eaten a couple of the pods that were just filling out, and they make a nice, like a snap pea, or mange too, whatever you want to call them, the kind of peas that you... Uh, can eat pod and all. There, were, there wasn't any stringy thing, at least not in the younger ones, but I'm going to pick... If I can get zoomed in on the right one here. I'm going to pick one that's fairly well um, filled out. I haven't checked to see if it's, if it's the one that's the most filled out. Leave that one there. I'm picking one behind it, actually. The tweet was my sister sending me this video. If I can get it to play. Oh dear. She's at it again. She lives in a condo in Midland, Ontario, on Georgian Bay, and that's the view from her front of her condo, where it is starting to snow again. She's in snow country. Let's see what we've got in here. Hey, look at that. Now those are roughly the size of, uh, uh oh, I'm dropping them on the floor. Those are roughly the size of the peas that I planted. I presume they grow a bit bigger, because when you dry one to make a seed out of it, it would shrink some. Gotta taste those. Mm. Oh, they're very sweet. Nice. 
you'd have to plant a large acreage to get anything much out of it. There are, I haven't counted the pods, but there are, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 pods on there, probably in various stages of development. I just tried the pod. As it developed the seeds, it got a little more stringy. Well, let's look around at some of the other things that are growing here. This is my very tiny bay laurel tree. I haven't had it quite a year yet. The noise in the background is Angel. She's decided to get up and shake. I haven't had it quite a year yet, but I got it last spring, like probably in May. And so far it had never grown a single new leaf. All of a sudden, it has decided that spring is on its way, I guess. And that's a, a new leaf, or I suppose it would be a branch of leaves when it finally gets really opened up. So the thing is alive. The only thing I can think of is it must have, it came out of a tiny little pot and it's in a fairly good sized pot there, probably 12 inches high and I don't know, 10 inches or so wide. So growing roots to adjust to the pot size, I have no idea, but it wasn't interested in growing any new leaves until right now anyway. If you were watching my channel last winter, I, well, several years in a row, I guess, I tried to grow citrus trees from seeds, buying the seeds and had no, absolutely no luck. And finally, someone clued me in and told me, plant fresh seeds just out of, the, out of the fruit. And that's what I did. This particular one is a Meyer lemon. I found some Meyer lemons in a bag in the store. And I was able to, oh, I don't know, I had a lot of them germinate. I only kept one. Gave some away. I guess I even gave some seeds to other people. Uh, so if you're watching this, let me know how yours did. But I'm very pleased with that. That's, well, it must be probably over a year old now, and it's growing quite nicely. All these new leaves here have just come out in the last couple of weeks or so. Video against the light of that window isn't good, probably, but this is a just generic lemon. I don't have any idea what the variety was. It was the first ones that I tried. Just a large lemon that I bought in a grocery store that had a lot of seeds in it, and again, I got a lot of germination. It's grown much taller than the Meyer lemon. Um, I originally thought I would clip the top off of this thing and then there would be new branches come out. Well, I clipped the top off and it grew another top. So I think I'll leave it alone for a while. I'll have to really clip the top off one of these days to try to get it to bush up. But so far, so good. I've never lost a leaf on either one of them. This is a rosemary that I grew from seed last winter. Um, it's been pruned back many times using it as an herb. I used it just a couple of days ago, I guess. And it just seems to really encourage new growth on it. I don't know if I can show you. I'll try zooming in on something here. Yeah, I think that shows it right in there. Boom. This. This was a branch that I pruned off, and from where I pruned it, it's got new growth, and new growth coming in several spots down below. Seems to happen every time I prune it back a little, so looking healthy, and should last me a few more years, I guess. Just tried doing this earlier and could not get it to focus. That's the very tip of one of the branches on my olive tree, and I will zoom back and show you how spindly the rest of it is in just a second here. Um, I don't know, I think I've had it three years, and when I first got it, I had brought a bay laurel plant back in the house, and it was infested with scale, and the scale bugs moved over into this, and I don't know how many times I have sprayed it with neem and whatever, and for several months you think you're rid of them, and then all of a sudden they're back. I just discovered the other day that they're back again, I've picked everything off, I've given up on the neem, it doesn't seem to cure the thing for me at all. But that's new growth coming on the end of that branch, so at least it's still alive and trying to grow, but looking kind of spindly. I can get back here to show you the whole thing, or most of it anyway. It's, well, from the soil level up to the top of it, it's about 18 inches tall. And branches in every direction, I've never tried pruning it yet. Well, I'll take you up and show you the host tomato. I won't bother showing all the other things under lights. There isn't that much change in them in a week, but we're interested in seeing how the host tomato project is going. So I'll show you that to close off the video. Under these grow lights, everything looks very strange, but that is my two host tomatoes, the variety that is supposed to grow and produce tomatoes in the house. Uh, I only had two out of four seeds germinate, and I left one of them in its original container, that one, I think. And 
pulled the other one out and put it over in another pot. So I have two of them coming along. I'm going to let them get, I don't know, six inches tall or so before I move them into a larger pot and put them in front of that glass door that we just came from. Something else I'd like to show you here just briefly. I won't go through all these other it's wet because I now bottom water. They're in a tray that doesn't leak water. So I, I watered them last night and everything in the tray, all the peppers have taken up most of the water, but the surface is still wet. This is an espalette pepper. And I'm assuming what I did is I dropped the piece that I clipped off when I was from the crown of it here, when I was shortening it up so that it would grow these side branches. And it's taken root. Now, I've never tried it with espalette peppers, but I remember trying it years ago with a couple of varieties of chilies that I wanted to propagate. It's almost impossible to, uh, they do root eventually. I think it's something like six months before they took root. And this one just dropped on the soil and has taken root. So evidently espalettes work a little bit different than the ones that I was trying a number of years ago. Well, this has got a little longer than I wanted it to get. So thank you very much for watching. I'll put this together and get it up on on uh, YouTube. I guess I want to also mention before I go that uh, the earlier section out at the greenhouse, the, the hoop house, was several days ago. Since then I have ordered the plastic and it's on its way. The cost was $114 US. It's coming from the American side. The whole kit, the green hoop house came from the American side. I called the company that I bought it from. They still sell that same hoop house in kit form with the plastic included in the in the package. However, if you want to buy a replacement plastic from them, they want to sell you about twice as much as what you actually need and they can't possibly cut what you need. So it was going to be way over two hundred dollars. I forget exactly what she quoted me. So I went on eBay, found a company in California that will sell me almost the exact dimensions that I want, maybe a foot or so longer in each direction, but that's always good when you're putting this stuff together anyway. So. Hopefully another month or so I'll have a hoopos up and running again. Well, thank you for watching.